today I'm gonna help Stacy and you set up $5 daily Facebook ads for your e-commerce print-on-demand brand. This is gonna be a simple testing structure that anyone can succeed with even if you've never ran ads before. So Stacy reached out because like many people who try to run Facebook ads, it became a confusing process trying to set up the Shopify with Facebook and her Facebook page and everything else. And she also wanted to launch her first campaign. So the very first thing that she needs to do and that you need to do is actually go to the Shopify app store. So that's what we did. We're gonna search for the Meta app. Now this is going to actually help us install the Facebook pixel on this Shopify store without actually needing to manually install any code or do anything to our theme that might mess things up. So just install this app and then we're gonna walk through the process of setting up a Facebook pixel and connecting to Shopify store. So you can go ahead and click on get started to connect and you will need a personal Facebook account to connect to get started. However, all advertising will be happening through this business account. So first you'll want to connect your personal account. Once your personal account is connected, you'll want to choose the Facebook page that corresponds with the business that you're advertising with. And for privacy reasons, I've got a cat face here, but just choose your Facebook page, click connect. You can also create a new one and then choose maximum for data sharing. You're gonna collect the maximum amount of data on your customers so that your website and your Facebook pixel is more accurate and better at finding customers for you. Now you're going to most likely want to create a new pixel unless you already have one installed on your store. Finally, you can put in your customer service email. So if you have a Shopify store, then your info at website name.com should be your email. You can use any email here though that your customer can reach out to you. And then also you'll want to put in your return window in days. So you can do 30 days, seven days, whatever is appropriate for you. I'm going to change it to seven and hit save. Finally, accept the terms and conditions after you've read them, of course, and then submit for review. Now, whenever you submit for review, it's gonna take you to this next page where it's going to take a few seconds here to tell you not to refresh. Now, when we switch back over to Facebook ads manager on Facebook, we should see a new ad account, new business account and new Facebook pixel. If you don't see these things, please schedule a one on one call. We can figure out how to set up this account properly for you. It might just be something that was overlooked. If you need help connecting assets, we can definitely help you with that. And then setting up your first ads and actually on screen like I'm doing now, um, helping you set up your first ads. And then I can also help you scale any campaigns that you're trying to scale. So first we're gonna start off by selecting sales as our primary objective. We don't wanna worry about traffic or engagement or anything like that. We're going for sales right off the bat, even if we've never advertised an e-commerce product on Facebook before. So if you don't have a product yet in mind, I do recommend Shine On Jewelry Print On Demand products. That's what we're focused on in this particular video. And I have personally generated hundreds of thousands in revenue from selling these jewelry products, specifically this one here, the Love Knot. It's a really good option. And so one thing that I want to do though, specifically for this client and for you is come down to the tag section, type in LX-C30011. And this tag, once you add it and once you save it, is going to preload real reviews for this necklace. So you'll see here in a moment, when we refresh, we'll have real photo reviews from actual customers and anyone can do this on their Shopify store, but make sure you have the Shine On theme template selected, not the Shine On Fast, but the Shine On theme template. And so once you have that done, you should see the reviews pop up like this with photos, with testimonials, everything. So this is gonna increase your conversion rate. It's gonna decrease the amount of people that leave your store without purchasing, and it's going to significantly increase your trust and social proof on your store. So ultimately, you're gonna make a lot more money by having these reviews on your product page. Before we can actually launch our ads, we need to choose photos to go with our products. Now, of course, with Facebook ads, we could do videos as well, but photos are readily available, especially with something like Shine On or with many print on demand products, you can get your hands on photo mockups fairly easily. Found with products that have messages like blankets or jewelry, 
uh, image works well purely because the customer actually needs time to read the message. So choose photos that clearly display the message front forward facing. I really like the luxury box option as well. So go ahead and choose three different photo options that we're going to use in your ads. One thing that I've learned running Facebook ads for myself and for dozens of clients is that you want to stay organized. You want to name your campaign with a date and the product you're advertising and your purpose for the campaign. So whether that's a test or a scaling campaign, and then you also want to set your ad set names to be what you're targeting. So your audience and your demographics. Now, I'm here on the ad set level by default. Once you click next, you're going to set the daily budget to $5 a day. And this is actually going to be what Facebook, uh, the minimum, it's going to allow us to set it to. So $5 daily budget on the ad set level. Now make sure that you have a website selected because we're going to be sending traffic to our website and make sure to select the pixel that we just created on our Shopify store. And that will be the pixel that we're going to be tracking everything on. And we want to choose maximum number of conversions and purchase as our conversion goal. Now you may see this message pop up and say that your ads are not optimized for conversions because they haven't received any conversions recently. And that's because you're brand new and this is a new pixel. It's totally normal. And this will go away after you receive your first few sales on this Facebook pixel, because then it will have the purchase data needed to match you with more customers. This is an important step and easy to overlook. So you want to change the start date to be tomorrow at midnight, because if you were to start this today, you would essentially run through your budget really quickly and not hit the right customers. Facebook isn't going to do a good job balancing your budget and meeting those actual customers. And then your data is going to be skewed every day going forward because you didn't get the add to carts and sales that you should have gotten. So make sure you start at midnight and give yourself the full 24 hours. And you might see this section that says advantage audience. We actually want to select the option underneath that says switch back to original audience because that's going to give us more control over who we're targeting, such as age range, location, gender, and interests. So in this case, for age range for this product, I'm going to set the age to be 30 to 65 plus. It's going to be men only because this would be a product that a man would buy for his daughter. And then we're going to use engaged shoppers as our first audience test. Now, you might be wondering why we're trying engaged shoppers instead of something like fatherhood or um, Father's Day or something that, that would identify the parents in this demographic. We will eventually try some of those audiences, but we also want to test out engaged shoppers because this is a behavior where someone has clicked shop now in the past week and Facebook is very good at finding buyers within the engaged shopper niche, regardless of what you're selling. So we're also going to come down to the placements and we're going to limit all placements to only Facebook and Instagram feeds. So I'm over here unselecting and unchecking all other feed options. This works best with images. If you have videos, you're probably going to want to use advantage placements and let them go to Instagram, Instagram Reels, Facebook Stories, all the different video placement slots as well. But since we have images, I'm limiting it to Facebook feed and Instagram feed. Again, guys, if you need help determining a strategy for your Facebook ads, there is a link below for a one-on-one -on -one consultation. Choose the Facebook page that you created and linked up with your Shopify. Again, if you haven't done this yet already, it only takes a few seconds. Just create a Facebook page. Now scroll down and make sure that you have manual upload and single image or video selected and then uncheck multi-advertiser ads. We don't want our ads showing up with other advertisers. So make sure to turn that off. Then click on add media and add image. And then you're going to be able to select the images that you downloaded from your Shopify store. So start with one. And now it's gonna ask us if we wanna crop it or leave it at the original. I'm gonna leave it original. And then it's also gonna ask us about optimizations. Now it's going to try and add music to our posts. It's gonna try and visually touch it up. And I don't really want to do any of that. So I'm going to unselect all optimizations and make sure that they are all turned off. 
Now you're going to create the headline and the description and the primary text for this ad. Now for anything with a message on it, the message is what sells. So I want you to take that message and put it into the actual primary text for the post. Just like I'm doing here, I'm saying to my daughter and then I'm listing out the actual message on this product. Now this is what I have found to work best for myself and my clients because again, the message is what's going to cause someone to emotionally relate with the this product and want to purchase it for their loved one. And so right after you get done with the message, go ahead and tab down and make some indentions and make some space and create three bullet points. Now for this particular product, I'm going to say that it's handmade in the USA. It has 14K stainless steel gold. And finally, that it has fast and free USA shipping. I will create an entirely different video on copywriting for Facebook ads, but for now, um, just know that you want to capture attention. You want to direct that attention to the features and benefits of your product. And if possible, give some sort of testimonial, get them emotionally connected with your product and service. And so for headline here, I'm going to say, I will always be there for you. That's part of the message card. And then I'm going to add a headline option. So this will split test another headline. And I'm going to go ahead and pull out another part of the message itself to use as an alternative headline. Facebook is going to test these headlines and see which ones perform best. Over time, it will start favoring certain headlines and certain text options because the now we want to make sure we have the right, correct website link because this is going to be where people actually go to and land. So if the link doesn't work or if it's the wrong product and not what they were expecting, it's going to be an epic failure. So we want to make sure that we have the correct link in there and we can always check that by clicking on the preview URL button just to double check that it looks good. And now our campaign, our ad set and our ad will be published. And the advantage of setting up our ad set in this way is now we can duplicate and preserve all of the data. So if we duplicate to original campaign, just scroll down until we see the trash can. We're going to click on remove all. We're going to scroll back up, hit add media, hit add image, and we're going to select our second image. That's how easy it is, guys. Remember to select original for your crop, turn off all the optimizations, and now all of the ad copy and all of the headlines and everything else that we did, the website link, it's all in there. Now we have the image swapped. So this is image two. And now all we need to do is do the same thing. Duplicate original campaign. Make sure if it says multi-advertiser ads here that you turn this off. Facebook's trying to be sneaky and pull a quick one on you. So original campaign, duplicate. And this time it's going to be image three, right? This is going to be the third image that we've tested out. So all we need to do is go down once again, click the trash can to remove all, hit add media, and we're going to select that third image. So remember, this is just my general testing guidelines. Now for other products, you might want to do two videos, one image. You might want to do all three videos. You know what works best for your product once you get your data back, but you have to move and launch your ads and test things out to see what works best and the data doesn't lie. So the data that you get back is going to help you guide your decisions going forward. Now, the incredible thing about this particular strategy is that now we have our three ads, we can duplicate from the ad set level and we can take everything that we created with those ads and just apply them to different audiences. So once you click on duplicate, what we can do is remove engage shopper from our ad set name, because this is going to be a different ad set. This is going to be our parents with adult children ad set. And so all we need to do, again, all of our ads have already been duplicated. We just need to scroll down and remove our engaged shopper as an audience and put in parents with adult children. And so everything else is gonna stay exactly the same. And we just created a brand new ad set. Now keep in mind, this is going to be a $5 daily ad set. So I recommend doing at least five of these to bring yourself up to $25 daily total for the campaign. However, you can control this however you would like. If you only want to do three and set yourself at $15 a day, that's totally fine. But each ad set will be a $5 daily budget. So you could do 10, you could do 15, you could do five like I recommend. So go ahead and use this for testing out e-commerce products. You're going to be testing different ads. You're going to be testing different audiences and interests. And you're going to be testing out different headlines and copywriting within each ad.
So use this powerful formula to test out e-commerce products for yourself. This isn't the best structure for scaling products. We're going to be going over a different structure for that. But for testing out products at a low budget and seeing if they have potential, seeing if they're going to get add to carts and sales and profitability for you, this is one of the best ways. I've been using it for years now for myself and my clients, and it does not let me down. It will consistently show me the data as either aligning towards something that resonates with our audience that's going to make us money or something that does not resonate with our audience and something that's not working for us that needs to be reworked or an entirely different product tested and tried. So don't be discouraged. You might need to run through a few different audiences like I'm setting up here with five different audiences set up between Costco, birthdays, engaged shoppers, and parents with adult children. I'm trying to cast a large net to see which audiences are going to respond the best. Now, when it comes to setting up your columns, make sure you have your CPC, CTR, your purchase ROAS, your purchase items, and your add to carts all showing. You want to make sure that your columns are set up similar to how I'm setting it up here because this is going to show you the most important data for your ads. And you're going to want to save this as a preset so you only have to do this once and you may also choose to rearrange the data to be in sequential order to where you see website visitors first, then you see add to carts, then you see checkout, and then you see purchase completed. So you could arrange this data however you like that makes sense for you, but be sure to add those extra columns into your actual um, daily metrics because otherwise you're not going to see these columns and you're going to be missing out on a lot of data. Don't get intimidated by Facebook ads. Take it step by step. Try to follow this guide as closely as you can. And if you run into any hurdles, let me know in the comments below. I'll see if I can help. You can also schedule a one-on-one -on -one call where I will go in and actually show you how to set this up step by step with your unique product and brand. You can also apply for group coaching where every single week we meet as a group and we talk about what's working for Facebook ads, Instagram ads, print on demand in general. And so be sure to apply for that if you're interested. Guys, hope you have an amazing day. Be sure to like the video if you got value. And I sincerely appreciate you checking out this Facebook ads tutorial. I will see you in the next video.